Welcome to the time! This is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business. Leverage is a strategic advantage. It's the power to act effectively. It means they need you just as much as you need them. It means you're not getting a relationship based on potential. You're getting a relationship based on results, on what you've already done. And that's what it's going to take to get the publishing deal, to get the record deal, to get the manager. That's what it's going to take to get success in the new music business. That's why we called it The Climb. C-L-I-M-B, creating leverage in the music business. That's brilliant. That's my good friend. And my co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter. Brent's an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady Antebellum, Joe Nichols, and more. And he also helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you can write like a pro, do business like a pro. And not only that, he always connects you to the pros. You can find Brent very easily at songwritingpro.com. Once again, that's songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my co-host, Johnny Dwinell. Johnny owns Daredevil Production. Daredevil has created over 25 national TV opportunities for their indie artists by making them discoverable. They've also created multiple tour opportunities. And through the power of digital marketing data, they've attracted a number of investors for their artists. And the investors like digital marketing data because it's numbers and numbers don't lie, right? So you can find Johnny at daredevilproduction.com. That's production, singular, no S. And there is no S because there is no other Johnny D. What's up, brother? I'm excited and nervous because uh, we have a guest here that's, you know, she's kind of a big deal. That's right. We're going to be interviewing vocal coach to the stars, Mindy Pack, who also happens to be one of the organizers for the first ever Climb Conference, which is a patch that I want to wear on my arm. Like, I, you know, <laughs> I, think, right. I think we should make trophies. <laughs> well, that made us dolls, and that was, that was one thing. But that's right. Yeah, we're going to go over. Oh man, vocal technique, uh, vocal health. Uh, if you if you sing or talk a lot like me, you need this episode. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but listen, before we do that, let's take care of a little business. The Climb Podcast is proud to partner with Disc Makers, who have been supporting indie artists before indie music was even a thing. When you're ready to make CDs, DVDs, vinyl, which is coming back in a big way, or distribute your music and videos with those killer customized USBs, go to discmakers.com, D-I-S-C-makers.com. It's the only place that you need to go. And while you're there, check out the guides and resources tab and download some of their excellent free guides. They've just revised and expanded their home studio handbook, which has a ton of great advice and information for newbies and studio veterans. You can find them online at www.discmakers.com or give them a call at 800-468-9353. That's 800-468-9353. Hey, and uh, real quick, if you haven't joined the climb community, please do so. We just had a bunch of people joined today, which is cool. You have to ask to be let in. We let everybody in, but you got to ask and you got to have a freaking picture in your profile. Like if you don't have that, if you can't figure that out, then we, we don't want you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's make people feel loved. <laughs> but lots of good stuff in there. Lots of good questions, people answering questions. And I think for the first time ever, like between a couple of questions that were asked on your songwriting pro group and the climb community, like, I'm pretty sure I'm behind on, on getting to... <laughs> to people's questions. So right. that's been my whole week. Badly. Anyway, uh, you're going to get a lot of information there. Good people. It's really active. It's not like your normal community on Facebook, which is cool. I'm proud to say that. Subscribe to the podcast. Take five seconds. All right, 30 seconds and leave a five-star rating and review. And finally, the best thing you can do is share it. If there's something that you're getting value from, if, if you listen to this podcast on the regular, post it on your social media, tell a friend about it. If it's helping you, it can help them. And that's why we're doing this. So without further ado, let's get to our guest. Mm -hmm. Just in case you didn't know how much of a rock star Mindy is, Mindy is part of some incredible voice teams and music industry professionals throughout the world. Some of these teams consist of laryngologists, laryngologists, I'm sorry, (laughs) ENT, artists, development managers, record labels, vocal arrangers, producers, music directors, and many others. Many holds a certificate, believe it or not, in clinical vocology from the National Center for Voice and Speech. Many holds a certificate in laryn- laryngeal manipulation. I can attest that this is a real thing. And we're going to talk about that because she manipulates everybody, including me. Um, Mindy is the creator of one of the top educational apps called Voice Tutor. 
Again, that's voice tutor. Not only is Minnie a technician, she is also a performer, so she understands firsthand the demands and stresses on artists. In 2015, Mindy was awarded the best of stage for voice instruction that has received the best of Salt Lake City for private music, music instruction for the past five years. And Mindy has a full studio in Salt Lake City, Utah, and recently opened a satellite studio in Los Angeles, California. She also has clients around the world, this is the good stuff right here, via online sessions. Her studio has a roster or clients from the novice to the professional. She can help everybody, all genres and styles, the injured or rehab voice, transgender, motivational speakers, and any other voice user that seeks out her help. Clients are in all genres and styles of music. Clients such as Brandi Carlisle, Justin Timberlake, who you just completed a tour with. The Lumineers, Emily Salyers from the Indigo Girls, Halsey and Pharrell, has seen the value of combining Minnie's technique and the vocal track reconditioning for the longevity of touring. Other clients have been seen on world tours, national Broadway tours, the Grammys, the AMAs, Saturday Night Live, international award shows, YouTube sensations, college scholarship winners, reality TV shows, cruise lines, and local to national performances, just to name a few. Mindy Pack, welcome to The Climb. <laughs> That's quite a mouthful. <laughs> that was. It is. Well, if anyone can handle, help us uh, with things that are mouthfuls, that, I guess that'd be you, right? So, <laughs> yeah, Johnny, you and I, we need to have a private session so we can work on reading and enunciation. <laughs> <laughs> and also my breath control. <laughs> That's why I totally was like, Johnny, you just take that one. I'm just going <laughs> to... It, it was longer than I thought. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I the jokes. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> but anyway, listen, I'm really excited to have you on here because I think unless you're not, unless you're Brent Baxter and you don't sing um, and you just do lyrics, uh, mm-hmm. just about everybody listening to this podcast that consumes it on a regular basis is going to get some value out of this episode right here. Well, um, I just am grateful you guys asked. This is fun. Yeah. So where are you now? You're down in Florida? I'm down in Florida. Yep. I'm doing tour prep for a band. We're getting all the arena stuff ready for the Lumineers before we head out on a world tour. So now just uh, before we get on to the, the nuts and bolts of what we want to talk about with you, can you just please share the bill <laughs> at this particular what? show down in Florida, oh. like who the headliners are? Cause this is awesome. <laughs> Well, the day that we're there, it's uh, we're going to do the Hang Loose Festival here in, in Florida here later this weekend. And Lumineers are headlining and then Cardi B, <laughs> <laughs> which I mean, that's just super uh, fun yeah. to see that that lineup. Um, Hosier, is that how you say it? Hosier? 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 Anyway. Hosier, yeah. yeah, Hosier. There's Lauren. I always say Daigle, but I think it's Daigle. Daigle, there's yeah. A lot. Yeah, there's a lot that are kind of on this on the ticket. So it looks, it's going to be fun. It's going to be hot. It's going to be fun. Yeah, very eclectic. <laughs> yeah, eclectic is the, that's, the, that's a good word. I'm well, just I'm talking like, like, <laughs> <laughs> I know we were talking before, and it's like, are you helping Cardi with her? Oh, are you helping with that? Because that would be... I, hey, if I was, that's a part of a voice I would definitely warm up. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just can't just wait, roll out of bed, and do that. You heard. So it. I can tell you that. I mean, I'm super excited about this because I had, as an artist, had to essentially claw my way to middle management in the vocal department from teachers like yourself, who you know helped me tremendously in the band that I was with. Everybody sang, and we had big harmonies in the group, '80s hair band, you know. But we actually did it. We didn't run tracks and I mean, we put a lot of work into it and learned a lot. So mm-hmm. I know that there's teachers that I had that I think maybe I outgrew. There's teachers that I had where I was like, what the hell are we doing here? Like, I, I don't feel like we're connecting at all. And then there's teachers where after one session, we're like, what? Like it was uh, night and day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you walk out like, okay, you're, you're my boy, Blue. Like, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I think I, I'd just like to dive into the shallow end of the gene pool here to begin with and just kind of talk about what are the most common questions that you get or common concerns that, that professionals down to amateur singers have when it comes to considering a vocal coach? There's a lot of questions that I think could, that I get a lot. Most of the time, it's a fear that once an artist starts working with a coach, they're going to change their style and what makes them uniquely them or what got them the deal. And I think it's an important question to ask the coach before they go in, because there's some coaches that have a motivation that there has to be a solid and perfect technique and or they may not prefer their style of music that the artist is singing 
And so they try and change it, not realizing that that's what got them the job. So I think it's really important for people when they go to interview a coach or they have somebody that's there that they really ask the questions of, are you going to change my style? What is your motivation? How can you make me better? In that sense, I think you kind of get an idea of if you're going to be a good fit or not. For me personally, like I'm not, I always say, I'm not going to change your style. That's your money. That's what you got your job. We, I call it artistic fingerprint. That's what's making you stand out and do what you do. You know, it's how you're paying your bills and that. What I want to do is be able to get you vocally balanced so that you can sing low to high without having any of the issues of cracking, flipping, the tension, and the pulling, unless you're choosing to do that for a style choice. But then when the voice kind of comes into balance, then all of a sudden you get all these extra textures and all these extra colors that you can have in your vocal tool belt, so to speak. And then you can pick and choose what you want to use so that you can have the freedom and flexibility to really create and be on stage to communicate what you're trying to stay and do instead of being worried on if your voice is going to hold out. So I think it's just, it's really important. Very interesting. And this is why you have a job and not only for teaching vocal, but you get called up sometimes in the middle of the night and they're like, Hey, you need to come to freaking Dubai or something because yeah. one of our our boys here our boys about to go down and we can't afford to have that happen on this tour. So, yep. What do you think the typical? I mean, is it different every time? Is it is it almost is it is it the same every time? Like you almost know before you get in the plane, like probably a couple of knots you're going to have to untie. With that I artist? do. Well, I do my own sort of research. Um, whenever I get called out last minute and it's not somebody that I'm familiar with then I always ask them to send me raw audio footage or raw recording. Like I don't want to hear the album because it's mastered and it's produced. I want to see live video footage. I want to hear live coverage. Even if it's like fan YouTube stuff, I'll like hashtag everything just so I can see what's pulled up based on, on there. So typically I have an idea of what's happening going into it. I'll also talk to the manager to be like, all right, so have they seen a doctor what's happening, what's changed, you know, from before and now, just so I can get an idea. Also, if it's a mental thing, if it's more of a, are we really having vocal issues or is this artist just in their head and like really freaking out over something that they don't need to freak out about because that kind of game plans and changes what I have to do, you know, moving forward or going into it. So <laughs> sometimes it's vocal coach. Sometimes it's psychologist. And I think it's dressed as, it's a, dressed as a vocal coach. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why I didn't go to school for a psychology degree. Cause I feel like I've like mastered, that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's totally a, yeah, it's totally a, I always tell them what, what's said and done in the room of trust, you know, is said in the room of trust. But yeah, there's definitely a major psychological component that happens, especially when it's somebody whose identity is built into the artist. You know, like, you know, I was injured as a singer and I remember like thinking my life was completely over because all of a sudden I couldn't sing anymore. That's how I identified as myself. Like it was Mindy, the singer. And when that injury happened, it like destroyed me. And it took me a while. Well, I now look back at it and I think it was the best thing that ever happened to me because it put me on this trajectory of vocal health and making sure I really understood how the voice works. So when I coached, I was doing it effectively instead of by, oh, this is what worked for me. So it works for everybody. That's not the case. Like I had to really understand why vowels and consonants and larynx position and all this stuff really mattered. And then I also understood the psyche of it because a lot of times when artists get injured, they don't have anybody that they can talk to because nobody can understand what happens. You know, you look at somebody on a huge scale, Timberlake, for an instance, he hemorrhaged in October, which is public knowledge. So we can say that, but his whole entire livelihood, not only his livelihood, but the crew his Mm -hmm. dancers, his singers, everything is riding on these two little vocal cords, getting back to being healthy. And so there's a ton of emotional stress in in that going into that. So you talk to any artist who's been, who's been injured and the guilt and like the stress that they feel of like, I just have to get better because all these people rely on me is a very common state. So you're just kind of having to deal with not only the vocal health, but the emotional health of like everything will work out. So. I mean, how do you, how do you volley that back? Where do you to start them? with that? Yeah. Well, to them, I sit there. Most of the time I sit and hold their hands and cry with them <laughs> the first yeah. time. And I just say, I get it. I've been there. 
I understand and I'm not going to let you fail. Like I'm with you through this through and through and we will figure it out. And there's a huge trust that happens when you're in a vulnerable state and they have to trust me. I have to trust them. And we build it together. And when we rise up on the other end, when everything's great, it's just this whole solidification of, of a beautiful relationship. But it's just being able to empathize, say like, I truly understand. I'm not just saying that because I'm a coach, like I have been injured and I understand what you're going through. And so I think once they finally realize that they're not alone and there is somebody who understands it with them, I think it, it helps move everything forward. So so is what Timberlake had, you said you called it a hemorrhage. Is that a common? Yeah. Injury? So hemorrhages can what happen. Happens? Yeah. I mean, you know, if it's a vocal bruise. What it is, is all of a sudden there's a blood vessel that goes into the vocal cords and it can swell and inflame and then it will burst. And Adele had it. Sam Smith has had it. I mean, Ariana Grande's had it. Like there's a lot of people who have been vocal about it, but everybody was always so afraid to talk about it. And so it's kind of been this like hush, hush thing. And now that people are like, no, this is, this can happen. There's an awareness that's going on, but the blood vessel fills and it, and it kind of blows up inside the vocal cords and it's immediate voice rest. You cannot talk, you cannot sing. And so it can happen by coughing. It can happen when you're singing. It could happen if you sneeze weird. I mean, nobody knows why it happens. It just, some people think that maybe it could have been an extreme. It can happen when you're screaming. It can happen. I mean, it can happen anytime. I think Johnny has one about every week when he does the intro. I know, Johnny, we need to talk about that. Like, ah! like <laughs> I was just watching Mindy's face when you're doing your intro. I'm like, about the yellows. I'm like, <laughs> boo, we're going to work on something and then you're going to come back next week and be like, the club! And it's just going to rock. We're going to come down and change. Change the style, and, Mindy. Yeah, I oh know. My God. Just yeah, don't, I'm not. I'm going to make it better. We're going to add like harmony into it. Like we're going to do something. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's fine. Well, I remember Timberlake on, uh, I think it was on Fallon yeah. and, with his wife. And that was really funny because they were playing like a guess what I'm thinking now or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he's just got cue cards that he's holding up because he can't talk, you know, yeah. and they turned it into this, this brilliant bit so he could still kind of talk about what's going on. And, and how long did, does he have to rest for? Like how long the, does it take to recover? Everybody is different. So it just kind of depends on the severity and what's happening and, and going through. So some people can get out within two weeks, a week. Some people it takes months. Some people it takes six months. So it just kind of depends on severity of, of what we're dealing with and, and all of that. So what are some, uh, what are some other injuries that, that you either have to deal with or either or, or work to prevent? Yeah. So nodules is a big one that everybody's always afraid of, you know, nodules, here it is. And what nodules are, are two, they're bilateral bumps that show on each side of the vocal fold. So that's when there's a ton of compression that's going on. So somebody that's singing way too hard, typically women have it more than men. So it's like the high, you know, where you're high intense speaking or, or high intense singing happens in there. You know, as a vocal coach, what I listen for is hoarseness. If all of a sudden there's a hoarseness or raspiness that happens, if there's a loss of range that happens, or if all of a sudden their voice is going and you're missing notes. So like if they were singing up a pitch scale, they'd be like, a, I'll sing for you today. Eee! Like they're missing a certain chunk. Of the right. There's point. a break in the. Yeah. And they can't get into there. or They just have to squeeze really hard. And there's a raspiness and that's when I'd be like, all right, cool. We're going to go get that checked out just to see. Cause really the only way to figure out if you do have a voice injury is to go and get an actual picture. Like you got to go to an ENT or a laryngologist is the best because a laryngologist is someone who's done more education in, and they deal directly with singers. And so if you can find a laryngologist, that's who you want to recommend. And there's two types of, of scopes you can get you get you can get one that goes through your nose to see the whole vocal tract or you get a rigid scope which is like a size of a pen and they just put it kind of back by your molars and they just kind of see how the vocal vocal folds vibrate and move and they can see what's happening so nodules is is another one i deal with cysts a lot and a cyst is i call it like the zit of the vocal folds because it sits inside of the vocal folds there's also polyps which kind of is a growth that happens on the outside of the vocal folds so you just want to like the things that singers want to watch for is if all of a sudden the effort becomes the effort that you're used to having becomes greater you know that's a flag if all of a sudden you have a loss of range 
that's a that's you know something else if all of a sudden you're uh, you know raspy and hoarse that's another one to consider you know so you just want to go and get get it looked at and just double check so so what kind of warm ups do you advocate or promote anything that's semi occluded so that out the gate needs to be the first one that happens and i oh i want to make this clear too so depending i would i would assume the people that listen listen to your your podcast are more contemporary singers contemporary meaning non classical non opera and the way you train a classical and opera singer is very different than the way you train a contemporary singer. So when you're looking for a coach or interviewing a coach, you need to, uh, you need to have a coach if you're in the contemporary world that understands contemporary music because they're very different trainings. The, the, the way you train the vocal tract is very, very different. So out the gate, that's the first thing. But anything semi-occluded. So semi-occluded means that we're not just opening up on vowels and opening our mouth. What we want to do is get the alignment of the vocal tract the right way and the vocal cords in its optimum position. So one of the number one ways to do that would be to actually vocalize through a coffee straw, which sounds super weird. You had to do that when we were in there. You had to do that. I was hoarse at, at the climb conference and you're like, get this little coffee straw. And it worked, huh? And it did work. Yes. Second day, yeah. my voice was much better. Yeah. So I'm what the from talking, I don't even sing. So yeah. So the coffee straw, what it does is you're elongating the vocal tract because you're regulating the air pressure, but because we have all this awesome, and I'm going to use pressure in the, in, a, in the right way, this acoustic pressure that's in our mouth, what it does is it sits back on top of the vocal folds. So it squares the vocal folds up to be in its optimum position and then it unhinges all of the internal muscles or tensions that are maybe out of whack. So it just kind of opens up the throat. And it's like one of the best tools to use for like learning how to, you know, belt or get volume, different dynamics and all of that. So you can, um, I'll give you guys a link and you can post a YouTube video of how to use the straw correctly in the, in the comments and people can kind of go on there and kind of see see what it does. But the coffee straw is an amazing tool. Um, and I make everybody vocalize with that prior and ending any sort of rigorous vocal workout. So for sure, after any show, and I make all the clients I work with, if they're sitting there writing a song, you all three know, or we all know that when you're pounding out a song for the first time, trying to create the melody that you just sing over and over and over and over and mm -hmm. over. And then by like, after two hours of doing the same thing, you're like, I can't talk anymore. You know, going through it. And so I make everybody as they're writing, they have to vocalize it through the straw. And then at the last minute, they'll add the lyrics in so that they don't wear out their voice. So that's like a, that's a good nugget for all you writers out there. Well, it's instead cool. of sitting there singing all the words, like sing the melody through the straw. And what you're doing is creating muscle brain power. You're creating muscle memory to be in the right place instead of limping vocally, you know, until all of a sudden you're learning a bad pattern without being in balance. It's funny, at the climb conference, uh, I could tell who were clients of yours because we had that one night where people, kind of the open mic thing, people get to get up and play and saw several people with the coffee straws. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I like, I'm like, sorry, turtles, but we need to, uh, <laughs> to work on the, on the, like, on the straw. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's amazing. The other one is like the lip buzz, you know, which I think we all know where you just kind of go through that up and down the scales in different dynamics. And then slowly you start opening up to creating vowels. So every voice is different. Most people can fall into four different voice types. So you have somebody that normally will pull chest. So when they're singing, you can see like their necks totally get tight and the veins are popping out. And That's me. Losing everything <laughs> up high, trying to get it. Yeah. And then you have other people who don't have a bottom end. So they're really kind of woofy. A lot of times this is mostly females, you know, right. singing down here, but then they get higher and it comes in. Um, you get other people who have kind of the yodel flip. So they'll be, nah, and they like kind of slam back in, you know, so there's like a, a yodely thing. And then you get other people who are pretty balanced and they just kind of need some nuance training, you know, so they can low, low to high without any issues. So. Yeah, so you can gauge it there. So when I toured, and we, I mean, that's pretty hardcore. We did six nights a week, three hours a night for years. Mm -hmm. And my worst enemy was, and I learned, I learned this early on, but like I would lose my voice the next day if I was freaking talking in between sets to girls over the music. Mm -hmm. 
that they're cranking in between the sets at the bar. So instead of being, once I figured that out, I would just be like in the back corner, like the brooding, it looked like the brooding artist, you know, <laughs> but then they would have to come to me, which is kind of cool. I mean, never, never but if, <laughs> like whispering in their ear and stuff and just really be cognizant of not trying to talk over the music. Cause the, if you've ever tried to talk to somebody who's wearing headphones and they don't, and they're cranking music and they're like, this is really awesome. I buy you and you're yelling, then it, it fit. But I will tell you, Here's what was weird. Like we would do our warm up exercises, and sometimes before the show, I would be I'd be tripping out a little bit because I wasn't getting up to where my normal range was. I was having maybe a little bit of trouble, and I would just go through the warm up thing that we did twice, and then it would kind of loosen it up a little bit more. This is before I understood the technology of the coffee straw. Yeah, for sure. But that that seemed to help. And, and but I I know what you mean. Like you get that mental thing going. You're like, oh man. Or all of a sudden you're like, nah, you're already running through the songs. You're not gonna be able to hit the notes on and, and yep. what are you going to do? And, and you go, you go on a big head trip. Absolutely. And that was just a bar. I mean, we only had like three crew guys, you know, in the band. Yeah. So it's not a big or a venue, not a world tour, you know, with 14 trucks and all kinds of freaking people's lives to be responsible for. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it could, it could, <laughs> it can mess you up. For yeah. sure. Well, you got to think for a second. So when a guitar string, when you pop a guitar string, that's an easy fix. You just kind of mm. throw the new string on there, tune it, and you're good to go. You're dealing with muscles and lig- ligaments and like human anatomy. When a singer, so, okay, so an, an orchestra tunes to A440, mm. right? Like that's the standard tuning, you know, for universal, whatever. When a singer sings A440, which is the A above middle C, your vocal folds come together 440 times a second. Right. That's how many times the collision happens. So, and that's just that one song. So now think about doing an hour and a half set, a tenor or female who's going in there. So if you sing that A440, if you sing the octave above that, that's 880 times a second. So you add that into all of the elements of the show for an hour and a half. I mean, you're looking at millions of collisions of actual like anatomy coming together fast, not in, not even including the amount of force you're using and force meaning if you're singing soft or loud, if you're growling, if all of a sudden you throw a quick, quick little like Wah! in there, you mm-hmm. know, like what's that sort of tension like? And so just as far, and that's just the hour and a half. Now imagine all your speaking, your press, your vocal warm up, your vocal cool down. I mean, you are, you know, millions and millions of vibrations a day, which is why it's really important for singers to like be really aware and labels and management to understand the demand that's for the singer, really making sure that there's parameters set up so that they have vocal health package or vocal health health care moving forward. And that doesn't even include any outside elements like allergies, post-nasal drip, do they smoke? Do they smoke or eat weed? Do they drink alcohol? Do they drink coffee? I mean, like all this other stuff that kind of comes into play that can and will affect the vocal cords. You know, like for a woman, are they on birth control? What medications are they on? Like any of that, there's a lot of things that can affect and will affect the voice that, you know, we just have, you just have to be very careful and very aware of what your expectations are, what the parameters are, and what you like do on a daily basis. So. I mean, it's like being an athlete, you know, I think of base, you know, it's baseball season right now. And, mm-hmm. You know, pitchers don't pitch every, every day. Mm-hmm. You're starting right. pitcher. You got to figure out the rotation. You got to rest the arm. And, and same thing about, you know, just kind of you know, how many pitches can we get out of them this game before we need to yank them and rest them. We don't burn them up for next week and, and all that stuff. I mean, it's very much an, an athletic endeavor. Although yeah. people, may not think of it that way. And of course I'm not a singer. So this is all kind of you know, way above my depth, but I was talking to a writer. This is a little while back and he's a singer too, but he makes his living as a writer. So it's not so much about his voice, but just about getting his mind right. He treats it like an athletic event. Like I wake up, I eat right. I get enough sleep. I go running in the morning. I wake my brain up. I do these exercises before I go right. And he goes, being a songwriter is going to make me live longer because I have to keep my mind and my body in in good shape to do what I got to do. And he's making stuff up for a living. Absolutely. He's a great singer, but that's not about that. And so I think thinking of it kind of holistically, yeah, what are you putting in your body? All this other stuff that you may not think about as a singer. It's like, you got to stay in tune. Totally. Yeah. I mean, there's been incidents, you know, where it's like people who's like, Hey, you shouldn't smoke if you're a singer period. 
the hot heat is just like you're putting the Sahara desert down your throat into your vocal cords where they need to be like jello. They need to be wet and flexible and all that. Anytime you ingest any sort of hot heat, it's just going to suck everything out and you're going to have to work a lot harder. So anything like that, vaping, same thing. Like you should not be ingesting anything like that. I always say if you need to use, you know, if you're a weed, if you're a weed person who partakes of weed, please eat it or oil it. Yeah. Like (laughs) please do not vape or smoke it, (laughs) but that should just automatically be out. You know, alcohol is the same. It's a relaxant and that, and you know, certain ones can make it so your blood vessels dilate, which then could lead to a hemorrhage. If you are, you know, in that way, you're just, you know, taking precautions, ibuprofen, ibuprofen is horrible to take if you're a singer because it's a blood thinner, you know, so you want to take acetaminophen. So there's just so many things that can contribute to it that other musicians, you know, your guitar, drums and that, that you just, you know, you can replace that. You cannot replace your voice. Like you just have to really, really take that, you know, good care of it and really be aware of what it is. You shouldn't eat late at night because then you can reflux. And when you reflux, you're bringing up acid acid burns the outer layers of the vocal cords. So you think of like sausages, your vocal cords are sausages and the acid pokes the holes in the outer layer of the vocal cords. And then your body's natural response is to send snot down to protect it. So now you have inflamed vocal cords and you're trying to clear out mucus and, you know, so it's just always these like perpetual cycles of, of what it is. So it's just really, really be aware of what triggers your body and just, you know, being conscious about like, if you really want to make money in this industry as a singer, then you have to make the voice a priority. And sometimes that's making really hard choices on lifestyle. I I just couldn't do it because late at night I like to eat and I'll be thinking, Mindy says I cannot eat late, late at night because my vocal cords are like sausages. Sausages. And now you want a sausage. And now I want a sausage. <laughs> I have some of those in the fridge. Hold on a second. <laughs> oh, dang Listen, it, fail. I always, I always say when I come in to like meet with clients, I'm like, do you have the music? I'm walking in going, nope, 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 nope. And they're all like, Mindy says, I'm like, you still have to live. Like, I get right. it. But let, let's like look at the parameters. Like, what, what are we looking at? looking at here. I would be I'd be willing to forego everything but the alcohol. Like I'm like I'm still drinking. <laughs> yeah, well don't drink on a show day, you know, or like if you're gonna drink that, you've got to drink uh, is she speaking Chinese? I, hello. I yeah, he's like, that? did we tell what? you we played what? six days a week? What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How am I supposed to not drink on a show day? If Listen, doing? you won't be the first nor the last that I'd have this conversation. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? And I always say that grown-ass man. You can do what you want. I'm just giving you the information. I ain't your mama. So. <laughs> right. so I don't hey, quick, quick question. So do females typically get nodes more than males because they're typically have higher voices and they're typically having, because they're singing at a higher pitch just yes. naturally. And so they have more, like more collisions. Like is yeah. that? Yeah. Great. Really? Yes. So it's not like a testosterone thing or a strength uh-huh. thing. No, it just has to the- do with the vibration level and the tension. Oh, now, no, it's some mathematical. Men, some men can get it. Really high tenors could get nodules in that too. It's really rare for like a somebody who's bass to have not, nodules. Not saying it can't happen, but I always ask the question with doctors when I get a male that has, they're like, I have nodules. I'm like, no, you don't. We're going to get a second opinion. Mm. And then I always ask, are they bilateral? Because by definition, they have to touch. Now that may change in science as more things like develop and you know more things become defined in vocal health. But typically, it has to be bi- bilateral and they have to be touching. So, what is there? Can can you r- rattle off a small checklist of things that uh, an artist or a singer that might be a songwriter and a singer, somebody looking for a vocal coach, like what should they be looking for? How do you shop for a vocal coach? Yeah. Okay. So I always ask the question, can you sing? There's a lot of people that actually teach voice. (laughs) I know, right? There's a lot of people that teach voice that cannot sing. And it blows my mind because it's like, you would not take drum lessons from somebody who could not keep rhythm. So why would you take singing from somebody that can't sing? And also as singers, we mimic, like we hear something, we mimic a sound. So if you're having a coach that's 
trying to coach you who can't sing or can't demonstrate what they're asking you to do. It's very hypocritical to me. I don't understand. I cannot fathom that question. So one I always ask is, are you a singer and can you demonstrate what you're asking me to do? And I've been in hundreds of lectures when I ask that to presenters and it immediately shuts them down because they cannot do it. And right there, and I'm like, ooh, discredit, gone. Like, I just, <laughs> I cannot do it. It just bugs me. Well, you, you talked about, you talked about mimicking. Can I just share something really quick? So yeah. I had this artist in about a year ago in the studio. I was doing an artist track, producing an artist track for him. And I'm with the engineer and he's singing. And I'm like, is he freaking, do you, do you have a tuner on? Like a vocal tuner on? And he's like, dude, no, he's just doing that. Like he's mimicking <laughs> what he heard on the radio, which is like really harsh vocal tuners. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> really? That is fascinating. What in the world have we got? What have we become? <laughs> it, was oh. just, uh, it was fascinating and depressing at the same time, but he was mimicking the vocal tuning thing. I'm like, take that out. There's an artifact in there. I can hear it, you know? And he's like, no, it's not me. It's like, yeah, me. That, that's the vocal. I'm like, stop it. How do we miss that? That's insane. I want to hear yeah. that. I want to hear what that's like. Oh, it's no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's amazing what technology can do now, but uh, yeah. So I, yeah, I ask if they can sing. I also ask if they, what their, what their goal is. If somebody's like, we're going to focus on breathing, we're going to focus on this. And they have like an agenda before I even go in, I'm out because they don't know who I am as an artist yet. And it means that they have a syllabus that they're following, following instead of really looking at what I need personally, because every student is individual. And, and, and on a different part of their individual journey, right? Totally, so maybe yeah. I got the breathing thing down. I, I need help. Well, and level I level 3.0 kind of stuff. And, and if you're going to start me, like, like if I'm coming in for guitar lessons, cause I'm Randy Rhodes from Ozzy Osbourne, he would do that when he was out on tour and you're going to teach me freaking Mary had a little lamb. I'm going to hit you over the head with my guitar. <laughs> right? Well, yeah. And I'm just like, if you weren't breathing, you'd be dead. So breathing isn't going to be my first, you know, <laughs> thing I'm going to focus on unless you have a major breathing issue. But usually with the straw, it fixes it instantaneous. Now, like, wasn't there a, a, a vocal coach who gave you another trick for... <laughs> <laughs> So you want me to tell that? this story? Yeah. You want me to tell the story? Because no, this boy. is how crazy it could get. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I was at the university and I had a classical teacher and, and it was a classical program where I was going in to finish stuff and she kept, <laughs> oh, I'm going to be embarrassed. Okay. So she kept, <laughs> we were sitting at the piano and she kept going, I need you to breathe, breathe. And I'm like, I am breathing. And she goes, no. And she waddles out from behind the piano. She goes, I need you to breathe through your vagina. She sang it. I need you to breathe through your vagina. And oh, I, my gosh. I, I had no idea. What, like, what, what I goes looked, through your head? Yeah, I looked through the, at the piano player like, please help me for the love of all that's holy. Like, how do I get out of this? And he just looks at me like, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, and so I didn't know what to do. So I put my heels together and I did a plie. And so I, <laughs> and I go. <laughs> 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 and, you know, I, guess I wish that, you could see her do this because <laughs> this is, she was telling us the story of <laughs> Of Salt Lake City at the climb conference. <laughs> she does the whole thing, and you're just like, you're crying, you're laughing so hard. Yeah. So that day in class, I learned to breathe through my vagina. I still don't know what that means, but yeah, see, there's some crazy theories out there. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, I had I had a couple crazy ones. I mean, I, you know, sometimes you just gotta you gotta go in there like with an open mind, and then mm -hmm. if it doesn't feel right, you don't, you know. You don't have to know why, right? Sometimes you just, you don't need to know how the clock works. You just need to know what time it is and it's time to leave. And yeah, totally. I, I've had a couple of teachers where I think maybe I've kind of outgrew them or something like in the sense that they, I just didn't have anything more to learn from them, but mm -hmm. I learned some like really important stuff, you yeah. know, like I remember like one, the one thing this one teacher I had in Nashville was just teaching me on the, on the vowels, like where to put them, like where are you putting your vowels? I'm like, what, what? 
like, what, what is this, a game show? <laughs> She's like, no, where are you resonating your vowels in your mouth? And I'm like, uh... I don't know. And she's like, well, that's part of the problem. <laughs> you're not putting it in the same spot every time when you're doing an ooh or not. An e. I use those tricks uh, all the time in the studio with, with my artists, you know, yeah. when a certain thing isn't happening, like it, 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 what's weird is it could be a performance that's necessary for that specific song because of the arrangement in the song. And the way that they're singing me, there's a couple of ways they could do it, but I need them to do it this way. So it cuts through and does what it's supposed yeah. to do. And, and, it's, and it's cool. So, but interesting. Okay. So what else are they going to do to shop for a, a vocal teacher? Um, I think they need, I need to think they need to find a coach that's student centered and meaning that they really understand what, what the student's goal is, what the client's goal is, where they need to go. So that it's again, not a syllabus of week one, week two, week three, week four. Um, I think the coach needs to understand the larynx and understand the different muscles and everything else. Um, This is a prime example. So when I was, I had this other weird thing that kind of happened and I went to record. They thought I, I all of a sudden I couldn't make it through the session thought I had a paralysis, wasn't a paralysis. Then they thought it was a tumor, wasn't a tumor. But I found out from a knee injury, my whole body had like seized up and it was like pulling my larynx off to the right. So I had just kind of some of this like tension because your body's connected through fascia, which is how I got into the manipulation. Anyway, we went into work and I interviewed like four therapists who are going to be working on my neck to get this to work and only one knew the muscles of the larynx and knew what was happening out of four massage therapists that were specialized in this myofascial. And so it's amazing to me, you know, because we're dealing with human anatomy that a voice coach needs to understand the main different muscle groups. What are the vocal cords made out of? Where's the nerves that like generate all of that? So I would always ask that, like, what's your, are you familiar with anatomy And then, you know, I would look at their their resume on who they worked with. And even if they're not famous, because a lot of coaches will not be working with a lot of famous people, but a lot of coaches will post videos of themselves singing or post videos of their clients singing and just go listen to them and see if you like how they're sounding. Like do your own research and make sure that, you know, your voice is heard in a way that you want it to grow, you know? And if you don't feel like it's a good fit, then bow out and find somebody else. You need to find that connection with someone. It's funny. I, okay, so I went to college for one year, mm-hmm. and then I then I got then I went on the road because I had enough of college, right? And I could go. <laughs> I don't blame you. That's cool. <laughs> That's okay. I got enough for both of you guys, and I don't use it. <laughs> it, it, it was funny. So at the uh, at the at UW Whitewater, Wisconsin, it's what they call like a, a weekend school or whatever. Like so, mm-hmm. the the last day really like Thursday, and so everybody goes out and parties on Thursday night. There's not really a lot of classes on Friday unless you're studying music. <laughs> okay, so we would have to go in at eight o'clock in the morning on Friday and you've got to be like in attendance for all these different performances to, for part of your grade. Mm-hmm. Well, my Lord, this one day, this woman, now I'm hung over, like all get out, right? I can barely, I can do it. And she's a, like a doctorate in vocal performance. Okay. And okay. so we're just like, I mean, I'm already, so keep in mind, I'm already in a bad mood. I'm judging it. Like, I don't care. And she goes up to sing and straight up, she sounds like a chicken, like a cackling. She goes, oh, I was just like, oh, her tone was like 2.5 K cutting through the middle of my freaking forehead. <laughs> I didn't, I, I thought my head was going to explode. And so you're right. Like, you know, like, it's like, well, how can you not be aware at if you've been singing enough to have a doctorate in this that you your tone blows like nobody <laughs> likes that <laughs> nobody like there's never gonna be, you just gonna be a teacher or something right yeah, like, can you or, imagine or, sitting in a semester with that then oh no how yeah. do you do it unfortunately that happens some a people lot. just have like weird vocal tone right like, totally and if maybe they use it to their advantage maybe they don't but i think you can learn you know, like, I think you can learn how to create a more beautiful tone. You may not have been gifted with it naturally, but I think you could learn it. I don't think, I know you can. I mean, prime example, I had a student who came to me in, she was in junior high. Mom was a friend of mine and she, her older sister was a fabulous singer and she wanted to do shows in school, musical theater shows. 
So she came in to her lesson and it was the worst sound I've ever heard come out of anybody. Like truly, it was the chicken <laughs> times 20. <okay? laughs> and I looked at the mom and I was like, no, I'm not doing it, not doing it. And the mom's just like, please, she really wants to do it. She'll be the most diligent student. She will listen to everything you say, please, please, please. And I'm like, dude, I cannot take your money. Like, I feel guilty taking your money because, like, she's a beautiful painter. Let her just paint. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, she wants to sing. So I was like, all right, fine. If you're going to pay me, like, I'm just giving you straight up. Well, this kid did everything that I asked, worked her butt off, like nothing else. And by the time she graduated high school, she had done, like, 20-something leads, and she had over – like $400,000 worth of scholarships to many schools in the United States. So I do think it can be learned if you have someone who practices and listens and like puts in the effort. You know, I think it is something that a lot of people won't put in that effort. Would you back this up? Like one of the things I learned as an artist, the manager that we had managed one other artist that was a major label artist and an absolutely incredible singer, like maybe the most incredible singer I've ever heard. I mean, Mm -hmm. Whitney, Houston who, Mariah who, like, I mean, like, way better. And she had a vocal coach. And I remember, like, what what she got a vocal coach for? You know, like, I mean, I figured I needed a vocal coach because I need a lot of coaching, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And she's like, everybody needs a vocal coach. Every singer needs one. Would you back that up? 100%. Because we're the advocate for the singer. Like, um, I can't even tell you how many times I've had to go toe-to-toe with managers and labels, you know, being like, no, like, we're not doing that today. You know, like I, I have the singers back regardless because, you know, I want, I need to have that person have the success. And so, you know, we have to be the ones that fight to make sure that, you know, everybody can still have a job and move forward and, and really, really stay balanced throughout all of that. So the jobs come and go for me. Like I don't, a tour's done and I'm done. And then who Mm -hmm. knows if I ever see him again or anything like that. But at that moment, like I, I know that every time they walk out on that stage, everything is going to fly and sound. They're going to do their absolute best because, you know, we're there working as a team. So yeah, I 100% agree with that. So it's kind of like, you know, everyone's worried about the golden eggs, but you're the one that's taking care of the goose. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like when something goes down or their voice goes out, like everybody looks at you and you're just like, okay, let's go. Mm-hmm especially because that's when the artist's mental spiral of down, you know, where it just starts spiraling downward starts happening and you're like, no, we're not going there. Let's go fix this. So, I mean, many times, like I can't even tell you, this is with amateur and novice. Like there's been times where we walked into the show and there was no voice happening at all. And they're like, are we canceling? And when you cancel a show, it's millions, you know, that's Mm. out the door and, I'm not an advocate for steroids because steroids is just a band-aid to fix kind of what's been happening and your body shouldn't have more than one round of steroids a year because of the side effects and stuff. And then I pull out my little vocal toolbox and I'm like, okay, let's catalog here. What do we have going on? And then we really work together and we get the show and their voice comes back and they go out and have an incredible show. It amazes me that labels don't have coaches on the road more than they do now because they really are the person that's keeping the longevity of everything working the right way. Especially with 360 deals, you know, totally. with labels getting more chunk of everything. It's not just radio. Like what's well, the point? Video, we're, we're all right. Cause we're going to sell records. Well, you know, that world has changed. Yeah. I mean, it's like going through and every, ev- the voice is a moving target. It's not like, Hey, we replace your strings, your guitars there. Mm-hmm. Like, when you walk into every arena, the AC is different in that arena than mm-hmm. other where pollution is different than it was anywhere. Did they sleep on the, on the bus or did they fly in on the plane? So then everything's compressed. And, you know, I mean, did you go from Florida where it's super humid to all of a sudden Arizona where it's super dry? I mean, there's so many elements that can come into play with that. And we all have our bag of tricks that kind of work and don't work and just making sure that, everything stays good. It's just, it surprises me. I think it's starting to change more. I think everybody's 
more aware of vocal health. Like I've seen a really awesome upswing in artists working with coaches and the labels being like, yeah, you're out, you know, like we need it. And they're like actually talking to the coach being like, are we okay to do three shows back to back? Are we not okay to do three shows back to back? And like asking for information just because, you know, they realize the importance of it, I guess. Yeah, that's fascinating. So one of the the techniques that you use, I got to be, I got to experience when we were up in Salt Lake (laughs) City. Was it breathing through your, never mind. Your (laughs) woo-hoo? I don't have have a hoo-hazen. I I don't have a hoo-hazen. Okay, there you go. (laughs) I don't know how I could do that. What does she do when she teaches men? I'm sure we can figure out a way. (laughs) What does the teacher do when she teaches men, by the way? Like, how do do you, you know, how does that work? I get creative. (laughs) (laughs) But you, you do a, and you're like certified for this. It's a what, what's the technical term? It's a vocal. So cord, I call it. Well, massage? I call. Well, people call it a voice massage. I call it a vocal tract reconditioning. And so, uh-huh. what we can do is, you know, just think about like after you do an extreme workout where you're lifting weights and everything else, your muscles get kind of tight, and so you need to stretch it back out to its resting length. Well, after you sing a show or, you know, you're recording or talking, whatever, you can go in. And what I do is with the fascia up, you know, layer in that we do different stretches and we put the larynx back into its resting length so that everything kind of balances out. And uh, it's kind of, it's amazing. I call it the vocals crack because every time I do it with an artist, they're like, I cannot live without this. (laughs) And I totally get that. Like I am not an artist and I feel like I can't live without it. I'm thinking about it right now. I'm like, Oh, that was so (laughs) like you're on a massage table and you're on your back and she's got her hands around your throat. (laughs) 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 And she's moving stuff around. Like she's like, you know, like, you're like, Stretch what is tongue, going on? And then you're stuff. like, oh, oh, that's really, that's actually kind of yeah. nice. Like, don't, don't yeah. stop, don't stop, don't stop. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. So can people, uh, Mindy, how, how can people get in touch with you if they want to use you as a trainer, like you do online stuff? Yeah, um, I totally do online stuff. My website's just my name, mindypack.com, so that you can just hit me up there and Skype, you know, and Skype. And Mindy stuff. spelled. M-I-N-D-Y. Thank you. Yes. You're good, yeah. Mindy Pack, like the wolf pack, but yeah, mindypack.com. And yeah, we could totally set up an online console, you know, see how it goes, see if we're a good fit for each other. I'm all about having that connection. And if I don't, if we don't have it, then I'll usually recommend out to somebody else who's a trusted coach just to do it. And I'm also, every time I travel to a different city, I usually have a day off. So I'll usually, if people want a session while I'm in town, we can do that as well too. So it just kind of depends on where I'm at during the day. <laughs> oh, that's super cool. And anything else that you uh... That we want to plug here before we wrap it up? Oh, yeah. So in June, I'm teaming up with one of the top laryngologists in Beverly Hills. Her name is Dr. Rena Gupta. She's amazing. And we're putting together a vocal masterclass series. It's one day on Sat. I'm I'm looking the date up. Saturday, June 22nd. Is that Saturday? Yeah, Saturday, June 22nd. Yes. What was that? I said, yes, the 22nd is a Saturday. I was looking at my calendar too. Perfect. But yeah, Saturday, June 22nd, and it's going to be in Los Angeles, but it's a day that's geared directly for artists and singers, and it's a big networking event too. So we're going to be talking about vocal health. We have the Scream Queen. Her name is Kate DeVore. She's coming in as one of our keynotes to actually discuss how to growl and scream and add kind of those textures in a healthy way. Networking, there's stuff for like voiceovers, people who do record audiobooks, voice technician. We're going to have classes on how to find your artistic identity like how do you stand out from you know from all the other artists that are out there so you know again i call it the vocal fingerprinting like what are some tools on finding that so if anybody wants to come and they're in los angeles i have a discount for any of the climb listeners oh that's Um, awesome thank you yeah Mm. i'll put a i'll have you guys put a link in the description and then if you just put in the climb in the coupon code you get a a significant discount if you want to come so Awesome. That is killer. Yeah. Uh, real, real quick. I, yeah. I know we're trying to wrap this up, but I, you just reminded me of something else. So sometimes I'll work with singers who are really good at singing pitch, the whole thing, but it's like vanilla. You know what I mean? Like it's no, they're, they're missing that artistic fingerprint. 
that thing? I mean, what are, how do you, like, what are some just like one or two things that they can do to, to kind Spice of. Spice it up. Yeah. So I make everybody do a genealogy of who inspires them musically. Hmm. Okay. So I'm like, so for instance, say Justin Bieber is my inspiration. I would look at him and then I would do genealogy and there's a great source on mtv.com where it's like we have Justin Bieber and then we pull up his, his bio or whatever. And his, you know, his inspiration was Usher, Justin Timberlake, you know, all these other people. And then I would look at Usher, Justin Timberlake, Michael, like who were their inspirations? Okay. There was Michael Jackson. There was Stevie wonder. There was, you know, all these people. And so it kind of spirals out. And then I make them create a playlist of all those people who inspired them. So they are listening to other people outside of just that one artist, because it opens up major doorways of more inspiration coming in. So that's one thing that I make them do so they can have kind of other people in their playlist to uh, get inspired. The second thing is I make them create a playlist of of 200 songs that inspire them. So it can be any artist, any genre, and it could be like, hey, here's a guitar riff that I like, or here's these cymbals that I really like, or here's this track that I really like, or I really like this lyric line. And from those 200 songs, I make them whittle it down to maybe a hundred and then we start going through it again and then it it, I mean this process should shouldn't take a week it should take a few months because they really have to think about it and listen to it and from that 200 we then create a list of like 35 or 40 artists and from there that gives me direction on okay where do we take you as an artist what kind of music are we writing and what kind of tracks do we want to start producing because it really fine tunes into what they want to do so I mean, I did it with me and it was really interesting because people thought that like, oh, you could be a country artist, you could be, you know, whatever, like all the stuff, musical theater, whatever. And when I started doing, so like, I'll do my own homework and see. My things that I loved was 80s rock. (laughs) Go on. I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) But like the the power, I know, like the power ballad rock singers, like heart and stuff like that. Uh, that was me and like the power like the martina mcbride like power female type voices like mixed with this 80s rock fusion and i'm like man that'd be a great album but it was like really it was really shocking because i listened to everything like i'm a huge music lover but if i had to focus in on where i wanted to go i was like cool there it is you know so it's just it's a really great way to really kind of help kind of steer head so then you're not like just all over on these places like it gives you a direction of where you want to go that's cool that's really cool. Well, thank you, Mindy. Hey, thank you. So yeah, much. everybody follow me on Instagram, man. I have hot tips and stuff like that that we post all the time and fun little videos for singers. And any questions, feel free to reach out and we can answer them. So. And is it so, just yeah, your Instagram? I follow yeah. you, but is it just your name on Instagram? Yeah, just my name. Yep, Mindy Pack. You'll see fun pictures of my family and whatever. I just sunburns and whatever else. Sunburns. <laughs> That's right. a good one. I'm keeping that one up. So That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, man. It was so fun. And yeah, let me know if we can ever do it again. <laughs> Love to. All Thank right, guys. So well, that me. brings us to the uh, end of another climb episode. Once again, join the climb community if you haven't done so. We let everybody in, but you got to ask. Subscribe to the podcast. Take a little bit of time. Leave a five-star rating and review. Let everybody else know what you like about it. And then finally, share it. Share it on your social media, whether it's the whole podcast or whether it's an episode that just really moved you or something. Share it with somebody else. It's, if it helps you, it's going to help them. And that's why we're here. I mean, that's what we're doing, right, Brent? Amen. This podcast exists because we want you to win. So keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. <laughs> <laughs>